This is The Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, but the real star today's show is the Moza Racing R9 wheelbase. And here it is right here in a little miniature shape for a direct drive wheel. And I gotta tell you, I've been waiting for this point in the market for a very long time. I've been waiting for smaller direct drive wheels. Quite honestly, when the direct drive wheel craze happened, I for a long time have believed that they were a little bit overpriced and a little bit overpowered for what most sim racers needed. And I've been waiting for the revolution. I've been waiting for not only smaller, lighter weight, lighter powered, more affordable wheelbases, but I've also been waiting for a drop in price for them to come down into a price range that is more affordable for your common hobbyist or average sim racer. Maybe not your beginner sim racer, but somebody who's been doing it for a couple of years and is looking to upgrade or they're getting into it and they know they're gonna be in sim racing for a long time. So that takes us to the R9 wheelbase. R9, nine Newton meters. That's what this puts out. That is actually one more Newton meter than the Fanatic CSL direct drive with the booster pack. And that's gonna end up being the most comparable wheelbase on the market. These two are really the best little or lightweight direct drive wheel bases available. So this one here goes for $439. And it is again, part of that new Moza Racing ecosystem, which involves their proprietary steering wheels. And I have the one that I tested the original R16 wheelbase with. So this is the RS wheel rim which I test the R16, they also have the R21, so those heavy weight direct drive wheelbases. And then recently we just did our review on the GS Racing Wheel, the new entry for Moza Racing, a formula style wheel rim. All of the wheel rims work with this or the larger bases, but the R9 is kind of special, coming in with that nine Newton meters and that very affordable price point of 439, including the wheel side of the quick release. Let's talk about some of the main features of the R9 wheelbase, starting with that nine Newton meters. It, it blows me away because it's actually in such a compact design. When I think about a Logitech wheel at three Newton meters, it's bigger. A T300 at four Newton meters, it's bigger. And a CSL DD is pretty much the same shape. And you're looking at five Newton meters without and eight Newton meters with the booster pack. So at nine Newton meters, this is a pretty special wheelbase. It is an all aluminum wheelbase. Everything you can see other than the connection points is really basically made of metal, mostly of aluminum. And that really nice black anodized finish. And it is also available in white, which is something really cool. And I guess we could actually say Moza is almost known for making their wheelbases available in multiple colors, which is kind of cool and extra special and artistic and all that. It is a heavy duty quick release system, the same quick release system we saw on the R16 or the R21 wheelbase with that 10 ball bearing pickup point that is very sturdy, very rigid. Also inside of the wheel, part of the electronics is a smart temperature control system. It's got a thousand Hertz USB refresh rate. And of course that wireless connectivity between it and the wheel rims, which is a great feature and part of the, their ecosystem, which is really nice, no wrap around cables. And then finally, that it runs on a 180 watt power supply. So one cool thing about Mosin, I mean, it's kind of superficial or sort of not a big deal is their stuff comes packaged so nicely. So when you get the box, it's really well packaged with that nice cutout foam. The wheelbase is wrapped in its own bag. And along with it, you get some stickers, a USB cable along with the bolts and Allen wrench to install the wheelbase along with the power supply and the on off power switch cord. The version they sent me is this black anodized. And then when I look at the shape, what I like, it's got, I don't think these cooling fins are doing a whole lot, but it does kind of have that cooling fin look about it. And I like that it's got this X shape. It's not just a basic box. So even though it is black with white graphics, it does have some bold graphics and it does have a little artistic flair. All right, taking a little bit more of a close or detailed look at the wheelbase. As I mentioned, I have the black anodized version and it does come in white with obviously a reversed out logo. It's all made of metal. It's all mostly aircraft grade aluminum and, and very, very nice stuff. I've mentioned several times that this is a very small wheelbase and it is. Its overall dimensions are only six and a quarter, 157 millimeters wide by four and five eighths or 124 millimeters tall and then five and a half or 140 millimeters deep or long plus the shaft itself. 
The shaft is three and seven eighths inches or 100 millimeters long, taking the total length to 240 millimeters. And then the shaft is about two and a half inches or 64 millimeters round. And then as I mentioned, you've got that 10 ball bearing quick release with a real good connection right there in that quick release. And you can see the little three electronic pickup points for the wireless connectivity between the wheel rim and the wheel base. The Moser Racing R9 wheelbase is lightweight. It is only 10 and a quarter pounds. So, I mean, that's not as light as Logitech G25 wheel, but it is a very lightweight wheelbase when you consider it or compare it to all of the other direct drive wheelbases on the market. And for a lot of people, that's gonna be a factor who maybe have to move their rig around or are using lighter weight rigs. It's gonna help in that department. Also on the front of the wheel, you have a little tiny blue LED light that confirms the power is on and a little tiny Moza logo as well. Looking at the back side, you've got an engraved or indented Moza Racing logo on the back along with the connections. And there's one connection I wanna point out there and I'll tell you all of them, but it says meter. Now I have not seen or heard of any meter. We did do the dash or we played with the dash that goes on the R16 and R21 wheelbases available from Moza, but I haven't seen anything external and I don't see any way to mount a dash to this. So that could tell us something from the future coming from Moza. Along with that, you've got the USB connection, the power connection, an e-stop connection, and the power button. And then finally on the bottom, and what I think was a wise decision by Moza, you have the four bolt pattern that is basically the same as the Fanatic four bolt pattern, meaning that all rigs on the planet that are there to accommodate a Fanatic wheel are gonna accommodate the Moza without needing to drill any holes. So that pretty much takes us to mounting. There we are. And like I said, it's mounted. It's got the bolt pattern for Fanatic. My R seat has a bolt pattern for Fanatic. This came with four bolts. This came with an Allen wrench and bada bing, it was on my rig, ready to go. Plug in the USB cord, plug that into my computer, plug in the power cord, slap on. In this case, I was testing it with the new GS racing wheel. So get that wheel on there and we are up and ready to go, or at least ready to talk about the Moza Pit House software. In order to use the Moza R9 wheelbase, you do have to use the Moza Pit House software, which is actually a cool piece of software and gives you a lot of control over the wheelbase and the wheel rim and a lot of its functions. And it's easily found at their website. If you go to mozedracing.com, go to the download section, you'll find all the software you need along with all the user manuals. And then once you get that installed, it looks something like this. And you can see the wheel rim that we're using. And if we use the round rim, you'd see that being displayed here. And you do have an overall adjustment here. If you just want a quick style, make a single force feedback strength level adjustment. You can do that right here with this toggle. It's currently at 60. And you can also adjust the degrees of rotation, which is unlimited basically and you can center the steering wheel as well. The main things that you can adjust on the force feedback are really nice. You have a whole mode here. So if you go to the second tab here, it's for the base itself, and you have preset conditions for GT, performance, formula, cart, drift, and rally racing. And I've used a few of those and they do work out pretty well. They're a good starting point. And then if you really get deep into force feedback, if you really get deep into trying to get it tailored to exactly what you want, you might use that as a starting point and then make some individual adjustments like, well, obviously the steering angle. You can adjust things like the road sensitivity, the game force feedback and intensity. You do have a description over each one. Maximum speed of the wheel. Like, does it have any momentum behind it when you're turning the wheel? And then the mechanical back to center strength, a la center spring, which I choose to run none of on just about everything. And the mechanical damping, and this is interesting, you know, these wheels are so free moving that when you compare them to a belt driver, a gear driven wheel, you might actually miss a little of that reduction in speed, that damping, that friction, internal friction that you miss that would slow the wheel down. You might actually want to put some of that back in if you're going into a direct drive wheel, or you just want a little resistance. Then you have another tab with advanced settings where you can reverse the game force feedback. That's kind of old school. I haven't had to do that in forever in a day. And then the at maximum output torque limit, 
which the only reason I can see doing anything but putting this at 100% here is maybe if you have a child or somebody that you're just trying to really prevent from getting hurt by the steering wheel. It does have a handoff protection, which I choose not to use. It does have a base status indicator, which is on. And I'm not, yeah, that's the little light here. So you can turn the little blue light on and off with that right there. Uh, other things, natural inertia, another level. We already talked about the speeds of the steering of the wheel. Uh, another version here is the inertia in the wheel, the amount of momentum, the amount of mechanical friction. So it's sort of secondary settings for the same sort of thing. But it, again, you have layers of force feedback. So you might find in a certain sim that adjusting it here has a different benefit than adjusting it the other uh, tab. Speed independent damping as well. So we had regular overall damping. Now we have speed dependent damping. And then finally, the start point of speed dependent damping. So if you were going to add that, at what speed does that happen? And then finally, you have the fine tuner. And this is an area where you might play more than you think if you get really deep into a Moza wheel. You can really work a lot of the noises. I say noises because I'm still thinking like butt kicker terminology. You can actually tune in individually the power. So if you really find that you're in a situation where I just can't feel the curbing, when I'm going over the red and white curbing, I just can't feel it. Well, you might want to come here to this tab right here and crank this sucker up. Maybe you find it's the opposite. Maybe the curbing is just too crazy. Maybe you're going to turn it down. So you can make individual effects. Now, they don't work. This isn't scientific. This isn't directly tied into the game. We aren't affecting directly the physics of the game. We're affecting the interpretation of the signals. So you're going to play with these settings. And again, when you get happy and you're like, man, I have it so dialed in, dialed in. I drive the Mazda Miata all the time. I have the wheelbase perfect for that car. Then just save it. I mean, go ahead and save it. I save it as the name. So for example, mine is 22, 2022 iRacing Mazda Base. And that's the one I use. I have a different one that I use for the Ferrari. And if I was trying a new car, I might use one of those as a starting point. Or I might go back to the basic settings and just start over again with one of these default modes. If you're new to the Moza software, another important tab really is this update tab. So right here, and this is the best update feature I've ever seen from anybody in sim racing. Just hit this one button and it would upgrade all of my components at once, both software and hardware, one click, all of them done. It's as easy as it gets as far as firmware updates. So pretty good software and I am seeing updates to this software very regularly. So as a new company, I'm sure as they get more users, they're gonna find more little bugs here and there, little things that could be improved upon and they're definitely making changes because it seems like every week I get a new version of the software. Sometimes it's just software, sometimes it's software and firmware, but it's that easy. Now, when it comes down to driving, it always starts with, I'm not gonna say it, I'm just gonna do it. It always starts with the quick release. Anyway, it is a really cool quick release. I've said it a thousand times now and I feel like I'm getting blue in the face with that, but it is a really good solid connection and it's easy to do. It's easy to pull your wheel off if you're getting out of your rig instead of trying to climb under it. It's easy to pull it off if you're gonna wheel swap because you're switching from a, a traditional car to an open wheel car. So anyway, um, now let's talk about how this thing really drives. And we are focusing and I'm gonna use both the round wheel and the butterfly rim during this portion of the show, but we are really here to talk about the base and what it can do. You know, in the direct drive world, all the mark, all the wheels that hit the market early on were giant, giant, you know, 15 to 30 Newton meter wheels. And they're, I dare say, too strong for what a lot of sim racers are looking for. And what do I mean by that? Now, a lot of sim racers come into this and they're playing a video game. They are looking for force feedback to deliver things like, well, here I'm in the grass and I'm going to get the wheel loose. That's what they want out of it. They're not necessarily looking to train to be the next Indy 500 driver per se, or not looking to simulate 
the real life forces of certain cars. So now I will say when I'm running like my Leo Bodner wheel or the big Simucube or the big podium motors or the R16 in the case of Moza even, we're talking about the kind of force feedback level that is on par with what I've felt from some of the Lemons cars that I've raced, from some of the open wheeled cars that I've driven, or even from my go-kart back in my racing days of go-karting. So when you're looking for that one-to-one -one feel, it's gonna take somewhere upwards of 15 Newton meters to deliver that kind of strength. That's for certain scenarios. If we're talking about typical street cars, we're talking about power assisted cars. This isn't power steering level here. This is power assisted level of force feedback, which I think, I dare say, is the right amount of force feedback for sim racing, for getting the effects that I want power wise. I'm getting no clipping whatsoever. I'm not getting myself enough force feedback to wear me out even on an endurance race, but I'm getting plenty of force feedback for it to be tugging on the wheel. I'm getting plenty enough force feedback to be getting the effects of, oh, we're gonna crash because of that one, the effects of a loose rear end. And when it comes to force feedback, when it comes to deciding how much force feedback I like, that's what I want. I don't want it to slow me down. I don't want it to be so strong that I'm worn out. I don't want it to get so strong that I'm gonna start over gripping my wheel. I don't want it so strong that it's gonna slow me down from the reaction time. That's one of the advantages of sim racing and why I think a lot of aliens for many years turn their force feedback down to zero. Now for me, when I'm running a 15, 20 Newton meter steering wheel, I gotta tell you, I for the most part am turning it down to about this level right here. So here we are at nine Newton meters. I'm running the wheelbase at just about the point of clipping. So I can't remember the exact percentage we were at, but it's gonna change right now. I'm in the Mazda, but it might change if I were in the Ferrari or an open wheeler. But I'm running it right at that point where that bar is staying green. I'm in iRacing. The bar is staying green the entire time, everything I'm doing, including crashes. So I'm within the limits and not losing any effects. And this is right where I would have put it myself if I could have picked. I mean, I got to tell you, it's the just the right amount of force feedback for me. And I've given you the, the, the idea that, hey, it's about the same strength as a power assisted car, civilian or street car, power assisted steering, not quite power steering, power assisted steering. And it still leaves a lot of the feeling left in the steering wheel. Now, with all that said about horsepower, so to speak, I like to call it horsepower because we're racing, of course, but with all that said about force feedback strength and who wants it that high, I got to also tell you that there is an advantage to going to a direct drive steering wheel, even if you're not looking to utilize all of the power of the wheel, whether it's this size or a larger one, and that is because they are inherently stiffer. They are inherently smoother. The smoothness of the movement in this shaft is just amazing. And if you're accustomed to a traditional gear or belt driven wheel, you would just be blown away. It's like it's like it's nothing even behind. There's no friction whatsoever in the movement of the steering wheel and the way it spins on its axis with just just no flex. And and that is a big deal. That's the kind of difference that'll make you feel whether you're playing a game and using equipment that's like a toy or whether you're really playing with something that's serious and really made to mimic real life racing as best as it possibly can. Now, another thing that is always a factor when I'm reviewing a wheelbase, and most of the time you'll see me driving in headphones, so it's not even a big factor, but noises. I wanna know if there are weird creaks, pops, clunks, any kind of noise that is undesirable or unwanted coming from any piece of hardware. This wheel is virtually silent here. Let me bring it to a close. Let's actually, let's just switch our wheel rims right now. I don't know what my car will do, but let's just for the sake of fun, go ahead and switch our wheel rims out real quick and go to the butterfly. Now, the difference, this is almost as wide so our torque level is the same, but because we don't move our hands, I don't know, there's something about it that makes a butterfly rim a little twitchier. 
and feel like you have a little bit less leverage for some reason. I feel like the force feedback is always stronger when I'm using a rim like this versus a full round rim like that. So um, anyway, but the noises, other than the magnetic paddle shifters, which we heard on that, and now we're hearing here on this one, which isn't even the base, that's the, the rim that we're talking about. Um, it, it is a very, very silent wheel. There's no sounds whatsoever, even in extremes. Let's go ahead and just get a little crazy, get a little extreme for a little bit, right? I can feel that force feedback quite a bit, by the way. So when it crosses me up like that, I, I do. I mean, if I'm gonna let go of the wheel, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's doing its own thing. It's got some kick in it. Again, not enough to wear me out, but enough to make me feel everything the car is doing. Those who want heavy force feedback, by the way, they're gonna want the bigger motors. I'm not trying to make the argument that this is the size or the, the amount for everybody. This is the thing, this is the level that I feel is just about right. This is, this is about where I want my wheel settings to be. So, sorry, I got distracted back to force feedback again and we're still talking sound. And there is none, it's, it's perfectly quiet. There's no noise whatsoever at all. You don't have any fan noise. There's, there's no creaking, no popping, no wiggling, no nothing. It's real rock solid when it comes to that. The next thing that I wanna talk about when it comes to driving with the Moza R9 wheelbase, or really for that matter, the R16 or the R21 as well, and that is the Moza Pit House software. Uh, we, we talked about all the adjustments that you can make. Uh, I found when I was running the R21, so I'm still very new to this base here. So I'm still a little more on some close to basic with some minor tweaks by me settings. But when I had been running the R21 for quite some time, I did notice that I had really made some small tweaks and small adjustments looking for some more dynamic effects. So I found that pretty much it comes down to curbing effects and road noise effects. And I think that, that the ability to dial that stuff in individually is something that I really like. And I think that when you get more and more comfortable with a wheel, you start like having those second and third layers of effects to be able to adjust. And for everybody, that's not their cup of tea, just like setups on a car. Uh, they might just hit that GT setting, make an overall force feedback adjustment and then call it a day and run the wheel and, and be quite happy with the results, by the way. Another thing that it does occur to me, and one of the reasons why for so long I've been waiting for small direct drive wheels to get out here and, and, and make a presence in our, in our hobby. And the reason for that is I always felt like the large motors have so much internal mass that you're feeling that at this moment. If you were to just swerve the car and even compare this to the R16, R21, to the Fanatic, to the Simu Cube, to the Bonner, to the AccuForce, to the bigger horsepower wheels. And what you'll notice is there's so little mass inside. You actually might need some of that mechanical damping to slow it down because it is so smooth that it's almost like there's no friction. It's not even the friction, it's the centrifugal force of the mass inside the wheel. When you're reversing direction, you can feel mass and there is no mass behind this. And it makes it so that you can really adjust everything with software instead of fighting mechanical forces. And that gives you a really, really good feeling. And the last thing really comes down to a question I'm often asked about many a direct drive wheels and that's temperature. Uh, do they overheat? How hot do they run? And let me tell you, I've been running this for a few hours this morning and it is cold to the touch. There's, there's nothing even remotely warm about it. It is, it is really, really uh, not showing any signs of heat. Of course, they do have some kind of internal temperature control as well. So when it comes down to driving this wheel, it's, it's got, it checks all the boxes of what I need. It's smooth, it's stiff or rigid, it's quiet, um, it's got good force fe feedback delivery, it's got a really strong quick release. The only thing that anybody could possibly argue or point a finger at would be the actual strength level, that nine newton meters, but at 439 for the base, 
it's the least amount of dollars per newton meter that you can get. So that argument is a fair argument, but it's just going to cost you more money to solve that problem. And that, and there are plenty of alternatives to that. So I've been really happy with it. It, it just has done everything. It's, it's one of the wheelbases that I've been waiting for a long time. And I'm just really happy that when I finally got to drive one of the small bases that it drove just like I hoped it would. And I think it's going to be a real game changer for a lot of the newer sim racers getting into the market, being able to get into some really close to high end gear as a starting point instead of having to build their way up. So very impressive Moza Racing. That should tell you everything you need to know about the Moza Racing R9 wheelbase. But just in case it didn't, let's break it down with the good, the not so good, and the bottom line starting off with the good. And that being, this is the best priced direct drive wheel that I've ever tested. Nine Newton meters, just right. Very strong. No flex, no wiggles. Nice construction and finish. Very good force feedback delivery. Very smooth turning wheel. Nice software control of effects. Compact base, much smaller than most. Lightweight, only 10 and a quarter pounds. Fits Fanatic 4 bolt pattern. Really cool quick release. Comes in white or black. Well, I've racked my brain trying to come up with something that I don't like about the wheelbase. And to be honest with you, I just, I really can't come up with anything legitimate. Uh, it, it's proprietary. You need to use one of their wheel rims. There you go. Uh, that's about the only thing that occurs to me that is, is a, a, a negative, and it's almost a logical negative. I mean, you look at Thrustmaster, you look at Fnatic, having that ecosystem is what gives you the wireless connection. So even though, yes, I did list that as a not so good, it's to be expected. Uh, I, I mean, I think the bigger disappointment is that you can't use the wheel rims on other wheels. I mean, maybe it's both sides, It's, but it is just part of where we're at with 2022. So I feel like we've already gotten into the bottom line. I mean, yes, that was my only negative thing to say about the wheelbase whatsoever. And so that does take us to the bottom line. And I'm gonna go ahead and address the elephant in the room. This really does resemble another direct drive wheel mark on the market. Uh, the pricing, between products from Moza Racing is really, really close to and in line with another company's line of products. And, and I don't think that's a coincidence. And I guess this is what I've been, when I said at the beginning that I was so excited about this moment in time, it was that I'm waiting for the market to get to where the product prices come down and they become more reasonable for beginner sim racers, for guys who are on a tighter budget to be able to get quality, long lasting equipment. And I feel that Moza going after the big boys as directly as they are, are the first ones really putting the challenge to them to really address bringing that pricing into range, getting more affordable products out there to us. Now, despite that, Moza doesn't make a less expensive. They don't make a traditional, uh, well, before this year, traditional wheelbase. They only make a direct drive wheelbase or three to choose from at this point. But I will say, and whether you're talking about the Fanatec version or you're talking about the Moza version, this is a point in time that I've been waiting for. I've been waiting for under $500 direct drive wheelbases that put in somewhere between five and 10 Newton meters of power and making it at an affordable price because that would change the future of sim racing moving forward. And I think Moza and Fnatic have both done a quality job of doing that for us. And there is a little bit of trade-off. So in the case of Fanatec, in order to get the booster pack, you're looking at about $700 but your wheel rim might only cost you three, taking you about a thousand dollar total purchase price. In the case of Moza, you're looking at that 439 price point on the base itself, and then 499 on any of the wheel rims, taking you up to nearly about the same, a little bit less expensive than the Fnatic, 
and getting one more Newton meter. And depending on the wheel selection, you might prefer one wheel rim to the other. But it is a, a new point in time having that offering from both of those companies. Now, in this case, at 439 for the base on its own, you are absolutely talking about the best dollar for dollar Newton meter Newton meter for Newton meter wheelbase on the market. 439 for nine Newton meters. I don't think you can find it less expensive combination. It's just that it's going to cost you 500 to finish it off. Beyond the strength issues itself, another reason I'm such a fan of the smaller, lighter weight direct drive wheelbases is that they're smaller and they're lighter. So I get asked by people on like an original Obuto sim rig. Can I put a direct drive wheel on it? And it's like, well, you put anything on anything. It's just, can your rig handle 20 pounds or is that just gonna make it wiggle? Can it handle the Newton meters of that size or robust direct drive wheel? And the answer is no, it cannot. Um, at, or it's just gonna shake and rattle itself. This is gonna work on your lighter weight wheel uh, sim chassis. It's also gonna work on keeping the overall package of your sim rig manageable so it's easy to move around i mean when i go to a full-size direct drive wheel when i go to pro level pedals on an r seat with a shifter and a handbrake and a button box and a stream deck all of a sudden my rig weighs 300 pounds and it's rather hard to move around now when i think back in time to early days of thrustmaster or fanatec with their ecosystems it was actually a big ask here buy a club sport base and then pick this wheel rim and maybe you're gonna need a second and a third one to really you know, get part of that ecosystem environment. With Thrustmaster, it was the same thing with the T-Series wheels. Pick and choose your favorite wheel rim and maybe you're gonna buy a second or a third one. And in the beginning days, when there's only one or two wheel rims to choose from, you're really making a big commitment and you're hopeful for the future. So in the case of Moza, it's only been a small amount of time between the R16, R21 and wheelbase release and then now the R9. So you're seeing another generation or another level tier product out of Moza. Same thing on the wheel rims. You had the RS wheel rim and there's the, the, the D-shaped version and then both an Alcantara or this four to choose from, but all large GT or full-size car style wheel rims. And then just shortly later, bam, a Formula One wheel rim. You've seen on the dash, the dash itself they had for the R16, R21 wheelbases. And then this one's got the little metered connection on the back and it really makes me wonder what's to come in the future. On the software side of things, I'm seeing constant updates. With my original dash, it was only doing KPH. And then with an update, it gave me the ability to switch it to miles per hour. They are young, they are new, but we're seeing a lot of new products. We're seeing a lot of updates on the software side of things. And I think the future uh, looks pretty good from where I'm sitting for Moza Racing. So I've been very happy with everything that I've been testing. Everything that I've been getting has been basically at production level. So I'm not playing with the prototypes. I'm playing with ready to go products. And that other than a few software issues, issues which have all been resolved everything's worked out really great and i'm really happy running and racing on this equipment so it's been quite a pleasure i think that tells you everything you need to know about the r9 wheelbase if you want to check out the review for the gs steering wheel we've got that available as well and of course you can go back in time and check out the wheelbase review for the r16 the 16 newton newton meter wheelbase along with the RS wheel rim. So I think that tells you everything. I hope you enjoyed the show. Be sure to give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Be sure to subscribe to the channel so we can continue to grow. And if you want to help support the show, check us out at patreon.com forward slash the sim pit, where you can be take part in our monthly patron races, get pre-screening of videos before they come out and hang out with our group and help support the show. Thank you for watching. This is the sim pit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'm going to see you on the track.